Okay, we're gonna face and bevel both sides of this. This will be the main center of the bell housing, this old piece of pipe. And it just saved us trying to find one. It's not the prettiest, but it will work. And that is going in between for our bell housing. It is going in between two plates that we have cut out from dimensions, had them water jet out. And this will be for the mounting pads there. That's the starter opening, which will get bored out yet. What I just got through doing was taking, because we have this Lakewood safety bell housing that we did buy, and it fit the engine very nice. So I took it, and we did not have the dowel pins cut with the water jet. We had just the bolt holes cut. So I bolted that on here. I took indicators and went in two directions to get the middle of where the bolt hole average pattern laid out so that any inaccuracies there were, uh, were close enough. And I've got two transfer punched points. Now, I can't go from these transfer punch points and get exactly the center distance I want, but I can take these transfer punch points, go over to the end, to go over to the milling machine, and I can leave this off the side of the table, center between them, with uh, straightening it with a straight edge off of those first to get this in line straight, then going between them so that I have a distance, which I know very precisely from measuring, that I will move with the digital readout to go from point A to point B to get the center to center, correct, but as close as possible to the known properly fitting pattern. This is the other side of the bell housing, and when we weld these together, we will put the spacer in between them. These are half inch thick. The spacer, we're looking for a five inch overall size. The spacer, we're facing it to 50 thousandths extra. So that leaves us a little bit that we can take off of each of these sides. And after it's all welded together, we'll worry about the engine side first and then go parallel to that with this side, which will be the SAE side. Then after we have this all welded together, which there's also a piece that we weld in for the starter clearance. When we get this all welded together, then we will bolt it on the engine and we will, well, we will have first taken this water jet part and roughly machined it out just about where it is. And then we will see where we're at so that we can take that same dialing, put it on the boring mill, go to that and then dial, bore this out to the actual diameter that fits. So there's few steps to getting that done. On the transmission, this shuttle valve here, and we could take it apart and look at the separate functions that it does. Um, people that said they had a transmission gave me a quote. Um, I asked them, do you have this in stock? They haven't got back with me, it's been two days. So we're going on to plan one of the other plans. I don't care which letter or number it is. Anyway. So this is well-worn, and the original thought was to get one that was not worn, which if we look in the case here, and you won't be able to see it, I don't believe, but here is the spool, and maybe take a rod. You can see generally that there's a groove in this area right here, and that area is commensurate with this piece right here when the valve is in. And the big problem is not the wear on this, which could be replaced. The wear on this groove is in general about 10 thousandths, but on the side the pressure goes through, it dips down to, I would guess, 20 thousandths. So it's gonna lower the pressure that's available for the plates. Now, nobody's even came up with this spool. We don't know what the size is supposed to be for the hole for sure. We have got a replacement spool that was supposed to be like this one that's not. But it has all of the important functions, the holes laid out in the same area. And the only real difference is that it actuates with a different style of solenoid. And we can take care of that because we don't need a solenoid operation anyway. What we'll do is we'll make a nut that goes over this and pushes that button in with a set screw when we put it all in, we'll run the set screw in and put a lock nut on it and that'll hold it in the same as if the solenoid was in the always engaged position. 
which on this earlier version, even though it's new, it's the earliest version of these is just the opposite of the later one, which we, according to what they said this was for, was supposed to be one of these. But also the diameter is different on those. And I still, I don't know if the diameters were different so you couldn't mix them up or whether it was a replacement piece for a worn hole. Anyway, we will bore this oversize, put a sleeve in here, put a pin through it so the sleeve can't roll. And then we got to fuss around with opening up all the holes that uh, are in between there. We thought about, I thought about, because it's relatively simple. If we just plugged all of this off and then put in a couple of uh, pressure relief valves separate from that and run external lines, we could run a external selector valve. We could do all of this without the factory valve. But the fact that I've already got a valve single that does everything it needs to do, it will hook up with the linkage that's already in the locomotive. Uh, it just makes more sense to sleeve this and uh, repair it than to make it a more universal fit. If you had one that was totally destroyed in here, just where you couldn't, it just had, had been too far gone or you did not have a shop that could sleeve it for you, it would be possible to plug this, drill it, tap it, and make it to where it works without that shuttle altogether. Totally modify it. Now, when it comes to working with that shuttle also, you have to be aware and look at things like, this plug right here. Now, why is that plug in there? That plug is not in there. It is in there to plug this hole, which we also have to open up these casting holes after we put the bushing in. These are for feedback for lubrication, most likely. And that's one of the things also, instead of guessing how much oil to come back where for lubrication, if we use the original valve, we don't have to think any further. And at this point, we got a little over two weeks, but we need to get the locomotive going for the kids. And if it takes six weeks, um, the kids will still live, but we'd rather get it done in the two weeks. You know, um, we're, we're not committed to get it done faster than what makes sense, but we want to get it as quick as we can. And I think we can do it. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But um, yeah, that hole is there not uh, for itself, but it was there so that they could drill this passage. You see, there's an alternate passage. So what we'll have to do is before sleeving it, I have to knock that plug out from inside and then put the sleeve in. And then we will use that hole to drill through and open up to this passage. Then afterwards, we'll put another soft plug in there because fortunately we've had a real problem with having enough soft plugs. So I got annoyed and I stocked pretty much all of them I can find. And every time I find one I don't have, not everyone. We've got every 64th of an inch from quarter inch up to, I think, two inch and a few miscellaneous ones. So we don't have every one, but we got a bunch of them. Anyway, so we should have that one, whatever size it is. Um, bearings, things, pieces, uh, clutch, the rebuild kits. Wasn't too sure on the rebuild kits. There was one outfit that offered the rebuild kits and they were saying nothing about what the clutches were. And so I was guessing, which is what most people seem to be running, is the friction along with the brass bronze friction. Um, some of the sellers are saying that they're giving you bronze friction discs and not mentioning what these are. And that was actually what these people did, but they had all of the roller bushings and the, the, uh, the roller bearings and the bushings in the kit. So that's why I bought that one, along with buying the other kit, which they said that they had all of the bronze bushings, and they actually did, so they did not lie. But they didn't have the other parts or offer a kit that had them. So a $300 kit and a $400 kit. So now we have a $700 kit that actually gives us all of the pieces we want. And uh, we bought a new pump. We have a new torque converter. Um, pretty much got stuff other than fixing that, uh, that bore at this point. And it should make a good transmission out of it. So, yeah. 
Anything else much going on? I don't know. Well, we have other projects. We have greater axles. We have, uh, they're kind of on hold right now because the locomotive, the locomotive was somewhat aside waiting on stuff, but once we got our water jet cut pieces yesterday, then we're, we're on to this and we'll be doing more of this. We will, um, after, after that I plate is uh, finished, what we will do as far as for the pinholes, I will pin it to the old bell housing and we will locate the starter hole where it is in relation to this housing here. And if there seems to be extra movement, which there may be to where I'm not sure, the starter was working good where it was on this, that part aspect was working good. But if it moves for some reason, then what I will do is I will move the hole slightly further away than where it's at. And the reason for that is if we look at the starter, the starter, it sets up like this roughly and it cannot go this way, which would be further away from the ring gear, but it can rotate this way, which would make it further towards the ring gear. And we don't have these bolt holes that signify where it ends up until after we're done with everything else. So then at the end, we can roll this into the ring gear, give it, bring it back just a little bit for uh, proper clearance, and then we can transfer punch for where the bolt holes go. And you don't get that uh, good situation all the time. Most of these are a centered nose, but you get one like this where it's extremely eccentric. We might as well take it as an advantage instead of a problem. And yeah, hopefully we'll have it all by May 1st. And the park, I don't think the park opens till after that, but May 1st is normally when they try and have the locomotive ready for the kids. So. We'll see what happens.